Okay, so in this problem we're told a sailor strikes the side of his ship just below the surface of the sea. He hears the echo of the wave reflected from the ocean floor directly below 2.8 seconds later. How deep is the ocean at this point? So first let's understand what's going on here. So we have the sailor and they're going to be striking the side of their ship. And we know the sound, there's going to be a sound wave that travels down. It's going to hit the ocean floor and it's going to come back up and he's going to hear it. And we know the amount of time this takes from the strike to when he hears the echo is uh, 2.8 seconds. And what we're trying to find is the distance or how deep this is essentially. So basically this represents how deep it is and we're trying to find the value D. And so how are we going to do this? So uh, we know that distance equals velocity times time. So we're going to assume that it travels at a constant velocity. And so we know the distance. So let's say D is the distance how far down it is, okay? So if we know the velocity it is going to travel and we know how long it travels for. That's going to give us the distance of how deep it is. So another thing to keep in mind is it's 2.8 seconds from the bottom to the top. But we know it travels uh, the same throughout. So it's basically going to take 1.4 seconds, half the time, to travel to the bottom, and then 1.4 seconds to travel up. So if we're just trying to find d, which is the distance to the bottom, we're only going to use, uh, for our time value here, 1.4 seconds, since d, or the distance, only goes one way. So we basically have to split the time in half, since the time is for both going down and then up. So what we need to do now is, we know the time it takes, if we can find the velocity, that's going to give us our distance, what we're looking for, or how deep it is. So we need the velocity. The way we're going to find the velocity is by using this formula here. So the velocity of uh, sound, right? So the velocity of this echo sound uh, is going to be equal to the square root of the bulk modulus divided by the density of the liquid it's traveling in. So we know the density of water, right? So the density of water is equal to about... 1,025 kilograms per meter cubed. So that is the density of the liquid around it, right, the fluid. Uh, and then what is the bulk modulus? So the bulk modulus of water is 2 times 10 to the 9 pascals, which is the same as newtons per meter squared. So we know the bulk modulus, and we know the density, and that gives us the velocity of uh, right sound when it travels through it. So what we're going to want to do is do the square root of 2 times 10 to the 9 divided by 1,025. So you're going to do the second square root, 2 times 10 to the 9, just plugging it in at this point now, divided by 1,025. So you will get a value of uh, 13, 13,1396.86. And so obviously this is meters per second since we're dealing with velocity. And then all we got to do is we know the velocity now of the sound uh, and we just got to plug it in. So 1396.86 times 1.4, right? Notice this is in meters per second. This is in seconds. So our answer will be in meters. So you're just going to take the value, uh, multiply by 1.4 and you're going to get 1955.6 meters. So this right here is going to be the distance. Uh, it right how deep it is right because we set the time to be how long it takes to get to the bottom So as long as you knew the speed it travels at that's going to give us um, Right how deep it is uh, But yeah, so just a quick rundown of what we did uh, We knew the time is how long it takes to go top to bottom So I knew the time just going down would be 1.4. So I know that I know distance uh, distance equals velocity times time So I can figure out the velocity I can figure out the distance or how deep it is so we know the velocity of Sound in water is going to be equal to the square root of the bulk modulus for water divided by the density of water, which are both of these values. So you just plug it in, you get the velocity, and then with the velocity, you just multiply how long it travels for, and that gives you your distance. So this is going to be your answer here. You can round however you'd like. But yeah, so this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this video useful.